Hey, I'm the Castle Gamer. Welcome back to PCM 22 Career Mode, episode 109. We're into June now. I'm going to check in on a couple of things before we just jump forward and go straight to something like the tour, which is until July. First off, let's check in on the standings, beginning with individual. Peters, after a really good early start to the season, is still fourth in the uh, world tour rankings even though we haven't seen him in a race in what a month and a half something like that it's been quite a while he's just a few points behind van art and gregoire who were his main rivals uh, during that period and of course are definitely overall better all-around riders uh, and so to be just behind them is pretty good vlasov coming off his giro victory is now the leader in the rankings mcnulty uh, after the podium is seventh. Bernal is up there. Kranz is ninth after taking second. And after his fifth place performance, Martinez, just 28th. He hadn't really scored much points prior to that. But Mickles, with some of the classics performances, not quite on Peter's level, is 26th. And Morgado, who will be featuring in the tour, is 31st. On the super prestige side of things, it's Gregoire on top. Peters is fourth there as well. And Martinez is all the way up in 10th. Piccioni is 22nd. Mickles 27th. And Morgato is 31st. It's a little bit of a more well-rounded performance from us when it comes to the super prestige. In terms of victories, Peters has six, which is uh, just a couple behind Fred Hybe who leads. In the team rankings... We are still on top of the world tour and actually by a fair margin it's come down a bit but it's still 1300 points ahead of Ineos. Otto Sedal, EF and Groupama are the top five and while it's much closer here in the super prestige we are on top with a 4,000 point uh, start to our season. Ineos right there but Bahrain is you know a good 600 points back with Lotto Sedal and UAE rounding out the top five there. So, yeah, okay, fine. There, there's some give and take. Some has been great. Some has been good in terms of our season. None of it's been bad. And we continue to accumulate points that are performing well overall, at least in relation to all of the other teams. I feel like expectations this season have been really high and maybe a bit too high. I think partially on, on my part, partially on the community's part, I think a lot of us are reaching that point where they're, you're expecting me to win every single race. That's, that's not realistic. It's not the real world and that's not our team. We lost our best riders. We lost two of our three best guys at the end of last season. We have a good team, sure. We are getting wins and we are consistently performing at a high level. But we're not dominant by any stretch of the imagination. And then when you especially add that plus four to anything, everybody, all of their attributes, it it's tough. And with the more aggressive AI this year, it's even tougher. I think in all, I think we're performing at least as well, if not better than we should be expecting at this point. But maybe that's just me. Maybe I should be winning every race. We'll see. Let's see what we can do going forward with some other objectives. Next up for us is going to be the Dauphiné. In terms of wins, we have 14 this season, uh, which is tied for third best. For the first time, we're looking at a significant increase in the finances. 70000 on 250 That is a huge increase top of my head that's about 28 percent that's a massive jump and that is a lot of money that's that's a big time signing right there but we've got to get there we've got to get that super success for that to happen and right now all the way into june we haven't made that happen as of yet here is why uh, first off the demands this season to get that increase have been absurdly high every single one of our objectives this year every last one of them is a top five or better including a necessity to win the Dauphiné which we're on to right now and because we are still right on the edge 
of a super success and are nowhere near the 100% evaluation that we're used to having somewhere around this time of the year, that that means we have a lot more to do and I need to focus in on the criteria, on the Dauphiné, on the Tour de Suisse, on the Tour de France. And I don't think we're going to get a top five there because I'm not taking a team capable of that. I'm hoping Morgado can pretty much on his own, on paper, secure a top 10 for us so that it's only a partial failure. But that means that's going to have to be offset by at least a success out of one of these two. Noteworthy results, the list is short. That stage win for Bausch, big help right there, actually. And I think we're going to need to focus on getting some stage victories at the Tour to get those bonuses. Registered riders, not a 100% evaluation, but a good one. The demands are very, very high this year on that topic. And in the squad, well, our sponsor, Qatar, Bahrain, nothing. Nothing. We don't have any Saudi Arabian riders. And so we've got a huge negative there, which is being offset by a sponsor confidence that's not quite at the top. I'd love to see that big increase. Right now, I'm not convinced we're going to get it. So we really need to focus in on the Dauphiné, on Tour de Suisse, and preparation for the Tour de France. And we're going to have to pull some results still to make things happen. So let's jump into the Dauphiné. I didn't pick a team that was the best that I could pick. But I'm going to have to go out there and perform with the team that's selected because today is the start of that. I'm not going to swap it up now. The AI has given me a difficult one here with Morgado, the first guy out the blocks. And Morgado should be my team leader for this race. So this is going to be a difficult ask to try to get the balance right on how much effort to put down on this short prologue that is very technical. A lot of back and forth, left, right, left, right. 88 seems to be about right for this one. Uh, 2.8K to go and Morgado hanging on so far getting through this one in about one piece. Looks like maybe even an 87 would be right as long as you do it right from the beginning. But Morgado gets through that little punchy hill. Final kilometer and heading for the finish line. Pushing now and he's going to have the fifth best time at nine seconds down so far. That time, well, that's not far down. But that's going to get a lot lower on the standings as time goes on. Our next best shot at something in this race is Johannes Peters, but he, with a positive expected race day condition, has a minus three overall, so he's got a negative draw, uh, a very big negative draw, and he's not a good time trialist or prologuer for that matter to begin with. So a 63 prologue is going to lead to a pretty poor time here, and he is our slowest at 51 seconds down. Morgado, still nine seconds behind, is 22nd overall. Team leaders are out on the course right now and most of them did not change the position so that was good there are some good riders a few seconds ahead of Morgado but Morgado's at a good place after one stage just forming up my train with 15k left to go here on the third stage of the Dauphiné and I've encountered my second recent bug within the game. I don't know what is suddenly going on this week as I'd gone really the whole year without encountering anything. Uh, but what we have encountered here is the order of the field is correct as your eye runs out of uh, energy. Uh, the order is correct, but the, uh, the time gaps have completely disintegrated and the entire field entering stage number three have all entered the stage on the exact same time as one another so with 9k to go that nine second gap that Morgado had that I was all proud of it's gone uh, everybody else same time too so we've got 8k to go and just three riders left the field has really really blown up in this one uh, it was down to 30 riders, and then it went back up for a moment, but it's back down to 27 here as Moskowskis is uh, kind of making his run. And, yeah, he's done. It's down to Peters and Morgato and a very small group of riders. 
I do think we are looking at some, you know, some time gaps coming as Vanderpool and Van Poppel are trying to attack here, and it's now down to just 24 riders. Uh, let's take a fraction of a second here and get these guys all set as they're all kind of out there on their own. But this is a very, very divided field, and Miskauskas is now the latest. Uh, Seneschal's going out the back, and yeah, those two are trying to attack for sure. Uh, but Peters has got it covered off pretty well. Now, Peters, very capable in the sprint, and I think uh, he and Morgado need to switch places here. Now, 19 riders left, and Morgado is going to go flat out. 3K leading out Peters. Peters has a great chance on this stage. 2K. 1.5. Morgado starting his sprint, setting up Peters, and Peters is now going to go. Oh. Morgado, come on, Peters. Come on, Peters. Push through. Peters never pushed through. I didn't know that the final corner was going to go left and right there, which never meant that he actually ended up sprinting. Uh, but he certainly had the ability to sprint there and never came through. And he was still trailing Morgado at the end. Morgado, just missing out on the seconds, gets fourth place. Peters gets seventh. The good news, though, is it's a small group. And a lot of guys are going to lose time. <laughs> Will we see the time corrected following this stage? Uh, this, oh, this was stage two, not three, by the way. Uh, but stage four is a team time trial. We'll head off into that one, and hopefully things have been corrected by that point as our stage one prologue. Nothing doing. Setting off on the team time trial here in just a second what to what to do on this one i don't know we're going to set off with an 86 and see how that works I and mean, that's not going to use too much red bar it's a pretty long distance 35k uh, this is going to be a lot about yellow bar management and at 86 they absolutely can handle that uh, in terms of the yellow bar though this is kind of iffy on whether we're going to make it we might be able to handle just a little bit more but you're seeing a few guys that are struggling here early on but is that just because they're the ones out front? Will we get enough recovery? Can we get five guys across the finish line? This year they're trialing, trialing a new, uh, in real life, uh, a new format for the team time trial. And it's an interesting one. Good and bad with it uh, on my take. And I'd love to see it implemented somehow within the game at some stage uh, to really get a proper look at it. Okay, let's take a fraction of a second and see how we're looking. Peters is definitely not going to make it to the end uh, as is. He just does not have a good tra time trial rating. Everybody else is looking just fine. The 86 is not hurting them. So either we sacrifice Peters knowing that we're going to lose him. He's not going to be one of the five crossing the line and ride for Morgado. That makes more sense anyway. And that means we need to ride harder because as of right now, uh, these guys are not being punished. So we're going to try an 86 and see what sort of pace that that's going to kind of lay down for us. Yeah, watching Morgado Mickles red bar wise, that's not going too deep. Uh, I think Peters, Peters needs to just give one hard push when he gets on the front here. So we're going to push him up to about a 92 and then he'll, he'll get dropped uh, after this turn. And yeah, you can see he's not actually hurting the rest of the guys. He peels off. That's that. Now we'll have him sit on for the remainder as long as he can. Azumi on a minus five. Really not helping his situation out much. Okay, Coatsy looks like he might not make the end, but everybody else is hanging in there. Peters is nearly done. Nearly out of energy. And he's about to begin his fate. So we were 43 seconds down at the first check as we went a lot slower, but just 55 at the second check as we're definitely making a better pace at this point. And as we are approaching the end now, 6K to go, I think there's no reason we shouldn't put this up to uh, an 89 now and push a little bit harder and see if we can at least remain neutral on the timings from here. Coatsy, where are you at? Coatsy, you need to 
get out of this thing. Zoom in your eye, close that up. That's going to leave us down to six guys. Mickles is just hanging in there. Ninety-one pushing the rest of the way to get five guys there. Oh, we only have five guys right now. And Mickles is right at the back, four hundred meters. He'll make it. There you go. Yeah, better, better finish. We close it down to thirty-seven seconds down. Move up to ninth place. I didn't go quite hard enough at the start. Uh, that much is clear. But we made up for it. it was still a decent time trial. Good. I think you can say that's a good time trial. I think we probably could have done 20 seconds better had I started just that little bit harder at the start. That first stage timing I think could have been helpful for us as GC wise Morgata was better placed than virtually everyone around him even though he was nine seconds down overall. I think that could have had an impact on where we're at right now but you're seeing a large number of Jumbo Visma riders at 56 seconds behind but none of them were in that group of 21 at the end of stage number two. So Morgato is well placed in the top 10 at 39 seconds down with a few key guys ahead of him, but some of them are not going to be the strongest of climbers and that should see us move into the top five, maybe into the top three, as long as we don't lose time then. Stages five through eight are all mountain stages. So let's get into a big old climb here. Uh, Morgato only on a zero race take condition, but Azumi, who's had back-to-back -back minus fives, today gets a plus five. So he's just all over the place right now. A plus five for him is looking pretty dang strong. Uh, Miskauskas is probably going to need a little bit more. He's unfortunately on a minus four. He's our third best climber, or really our second best climber. And so he's feeling it. <laughs> he's feeling it. He's not going to last terribly long. Uh, but Mikkel's struggling here. Uri is struggling. Uh, Coetzee is struggling. Now oh, we're seeing guys go backwards and dropping out. So there's two out the group. Peters has been hanging on. Uh, let's get him to protect Azumi and gel up. Nope, that leaves Morgato alone. Let's uh, switch that to Morgato. 74 left, and we're going to what looks like make it over the top with these five. They'll get a chance to recover a bit. We're down to a single breakaway rider with a slightly over one minute advantage. And it's still a pretty healthy peloton uh, setting up the uh, final climb, which is really a short one, to be honest. I don't think we're going to be looking at too many time gaps over that one. That's a pretty punchy final. Uh, let's take a look at what that is. This little part here could... Uh, do some damage and not see recovery, but that's 5k, 7.5%. Whoa, you guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, Azumi's hanging on. This is all Morgato. Morgato right at the back of the group. Pace really picked up through there. We will train up before the climb as, you know, it's we got six guys and it'll only be 5k to, to cover. Uh, but let's get through this little hill first before we uh, form our train. And we go over the top of that. And now you want to form up. Morgado's looking good. Azumi, of course, is looking fantastic. He'll do the lead out. I think we can get Peters and his punchiness in there for a little bit. So Coetzee will go. Oh, he's he's good too. And Miskauskas is just weak sauce today and needs to uh, come forward very quickly before everybody else drops back too far to get behind him. Okay, easing off, easing off. Coetzee, there's Peters, there's Azumi, and Morgato is almost where he needs to be. Miskauskas go a little harder so we can uh, pull open a gap a little bit. 
and Morgado is fighting to get through there, but is now. And we're at the base of the climb, and Miskauskas is done. So four guys for this. Azumi will gel now. And Coatsy, 95. Peters is coming through just fine. Azumi, Morgado, they're just about in place. Skauskas, I didn't forget you, buddy. 4.6k. Peters is definitely feeling this. And we split the field down to 21. Red bar's gone, so 99, but keep pushing, 3.4. And Peters. Peters is going to be done here, so we're going to drop him out of the uh, order. Azumi's going to close that up. Good. And we're looking at 2.9k now. Jail for Morgado. Azumi has already triggered his Coatsy. It's going to go a couple, maybe 100 meters more. There we go. And now Azumi as the Venipoles coming in, trying to take over and Azumi, what's an 89 going to look like here for a moment? What's a 90 going to look like? About a 91. And he eases off over the top. 2K. It's going to get less steep. Coatsy's gone. Peters is gone. A whole lot of riders are gone. 22 left. Gel just now kicking in for Mar Morgado. Azumi is sprinting. And now Morgado is sprinting. Can we get him a top three? Can we get him a top two? I don't like it. He's on the outside. Squeeze. Squeeze. They ever they always do it to me. They always do it to me. Ayuso takes the win. Seven seconds ahead of Morgado. We'll see if they give him time. But that is a second place for Morgado ahead of Johannesson. And then Gregoire. And Azumi gets fifth. Ucha Brooks. Uh, Vanderpool, Plap, Venipol, and Sivakov. They said there were gaps. Now is a clear gap right here. I would imagine after 15th we should see a gap. It's another good stage. And gaps were given. Ayuso gains that 7 seconds plus 10 for winning, but Morgado is second, and then they put everybody down to 15th on the same time as him, even though Tercaro and Dos Santos were further behind Ayuso than Morgata was, but hey, I mean, come on, we've seen that 10,000 10, times before in this game, that's how that works, but we do have gaps of 50 seconds behind, and that's going to stretch the field, change the outcome. Azumi climbs into the top 10, but more importantly, Morgato climbs up to fourth place, just four seconds off of Venipol, and we have three mountain stages still to come. Ayuso is well placed right now with the lead, but Morgado is certainly not out of it at 40 seconds, and things could go up or down rather rapidly. Gregoire drops to two minutes back, though. That's important. Ocha Brooks is two minutes back already. And looking at, like, Vanderpool could easily fall away. He didn't fall away much this time, but this wasn't a major mountain stage. The one big mountain didn't see a decimation of the field, just the punchiness at the end with only, you know, a small amount of recovery after, you know, the penultimate climb and then undulation you had in there. So that set us up well with, luckily, Azumi to lead out Morgado uh, and, well, really the other guys to break up the field. We'll see what happens in those coming stages. There's definitely a couple big mountain stages where the field can drastically change and see gaps much larger than two minutes down to 16th. That is going to do it for this episode, though. I'm the Calthlong Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there, and bye for now.